stay tuned if you love beautiful, exciting, passionate guitar playing, because Horrendous are back with Ontological Mysterium. Horrendous have been one of the more celebrated bands within the underground for, like, progressive and technical death metal, like, you know, intellectually minded, but not lacking on the primal either. They are one of the major bands, perhaps not as synonymous as Blood Incantation, for example, but when we just did that Blood Incantation album club, and we were talking about kind of in the mid-2010s, like death metal as a more progressive kind of guise, kind of gained a big influx of bands making that kind of newly interesting. Like Horrendous are like one of the first names that you you mentioned there. And the evolution that Horrendous have gone on from their first record through to their late ones, I think is one of those really exciting stories of that, you know, decade of, of heavy extreme music. Um, Elliot, I would have imagined that you would have been, you know, checked into Horrendous on that journey as well, right? Oh yeah, I've always really liked them. They were they were never quite in the sort of S tier of modern death metal. So like they say, Blood Incantation and Piss Grave for me are like the maybe the two standout bands of the last decade. But if you're putting things like Artificial Brain in maybe the B tier, I would put Horrendous alongside Two Mold and the like in the A tier. Like the way they've become increasingly eccentric and bizarre, but still having that kind of Swedish death metal quality to it, like a bit of the sort of gore gut style technicality and a lot more melody. Than their peers would deal on a bit a hefty amount of the boodly doodly bass, which I will never be turning down. <laughs> but it's funny for me, like as much as I like this band, them being kind of going away for five years, and when they normally have quite small gaps between the records, I kind of largely forgotten what a great band they are. Well, I think we. We're at like a slightly different point with them, I guess, because I remember like around the time the um the uh Aesthesis and Anarata albums in kind of 2014, 2015, that was when they like really like turned up and blew some minds with like this big impressive sound that they gained for themselves. We're now five years from the previous album Idol, which I did bring on to TNM at the at the time. Um but that is the longest gap in their material. And I, I think there's a period there, I guess, of like, you know, really quick, rapid evolution from horrendous from albums one through four like a period of like five years or so that's the kind of like quick gestation periods comparable to you know some of the classic metal bands that they're influenced by how they used to kind of change and evolve quickly album upon album now we've had that put on pause for a little while and we're at a state of kind of a new era of like you know how much further can you be can you can you take that um and i think it's fair to say that horrendous have definitely found a niche but i think ontological mysterium represents how they can make that like continually refreshing this album is 37 minutes long which is their shortest to date yet i also think it's actually their most progressive album to date and it has this energy of like going really off road and ambitious but while absolutely zipping through it with this like wild pace that makes it like a whirlwind of an album and and sam i know that you know you're not, not always one for the the long prog album but when fused to something that has that kind of like that excitability to it um and you know some of their obvious progenitors are some of your favorite bands in this genre like how did you find horrendous is this new for you same with uh, yeah Rift? i i never listened to them i realized i'd seen one of their album artworks the 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 ex or how have you pronounce that like yeah. i recognized that artwork i was like oh fuck that's them cool um, but never really... is one of my favorite covers of the last like 10 years or so like never really listened to them this is a mental album like <laughs> how many kind of different strands of extreme metal and just metal in general it kind of ties together but does so you're right in 37 minutes is it's crazy like because i'd say that it's cool yep yeah, stefano but there's heavy metal black metal like prog there's like little bits of grind in there and stuff like that it's really eclectic but fun rides to go on like i'm still kind of figuring out parts of it but you're right um the sort of latter death is where I kind of go, yeah, you know, the, the way I like those albums. Sure, That's yeah. where I can kind of grab one to and kind of go, yep, cool. There's, you know, Sound of Perseverance stuff. Uh, the <laughs> diddly, diddly bass, as you say, or however you put it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but um, bass sound is mental, but I'm all, I'm quite, I'm quite, growing quite fond of like mental bass sounds in death metal albums. It's kind of just one of those like <laughs> quirks of the genre. I'm like, you don't get that anywhere else. I quite like it, you know. <laughs> yeah, at some point we'll get you back on an obscure album, and you go, ah, yeah, that's a uh, that's what I was missing last time. Um, the thing with this is like, you know, it's not it, like it is kind of a mental album. I can't disagree with that, but it's not like a. Um... It's not impenetrable. Is no, what I'd say. Well, it is, but I also I was not gonna I was gonna say it's not like wacky. Like it's no, not like a. a it's not I mean, a circus album, like in the way yeah. like some things where like 
Well, I didn't like, you know, when we done like Between the Buried and Me and I'd always complained about like the more kind sure, of Sure, yeah, and, and, and it's that. not even that, the, the way I fucking love and the way you can't stand, the way like Imperial Triumphant like throw yeah. you around in a way. It's not uh, completely jarring. And yeah, and it has like loads of like mad different instruments or whatever drawn in. This is generally just sort of like, well, like four piece band stuff. But I think you can hear in like the sheer musicality of the playing and the arrangements on this, that these are guys with like an incredibly keen knowledge and passion for like, really classic timeless forms of progressive rock music right like rush mm. iron maiden king crimson and they are applying that to like an extreme metal sound and uh like the intro track the blaze starts feeling like this kind of almost like atmospheric doom thing but then in the second minute of it the guitars are going full iron maiden yeah and it is dazzling. so much heavy metal on there yeah like- and like the sequence in the album does things like that you'll get a track like uh, Aurora uh, Neo Tecara uh, which is like just a full like a little like jazz track yeah and it really it, like, like loose freeform kind of yeah, jazz thing on it um, it reminds me of like the kind of Alan Holdsworth stuff that you hear on like Cynic or Meshuggah albums or whatever and it just takes one song through to the other and you've got like a, a mad like robot voice instrumental exogenesis and it gives this impression of like the album constantly moving you're really in it for a fluid 37 minutes and when you apply that same principle to like you know the fuller songs it unlocks some really just like exciting metal tracks to listen to. I should say, I fucking love this record. Like, nice. It's, yeah, it's great. It's so weird to be pleasantly surprised by a band <laughs> that you've loved their material before. But I think it is just that five years away, sort of them becoming, I want to say part of the furniture, but not being like my go to death metal band yeah. of the last 10 years. And then putting this on and just going, I have been a fucking fool. Like, how have I not been putting these guys in the same camp? Because, like you say, The Blaze, as a way to open it, like, really fun and exciting. And for a record that's going to have so many twists and turns, it's really cool to open it with something genuinely anthemic and, like, tension escalating. And then for that to go into Cryosopia, the archaeology of Dawn, God knows, like, there's a a labyrinthine masterpiece that draws on everything from, like, Morbid Angel to, like, Stratovarius in its guitar leads... Steve Harris blubbering bass all over it, and like a super kinetic drum performance, and all that, and you just get this most like the most inhuman vocal performance, like the way that snarls and bellows. It's almost like Glenn Benton doing baby talk <laughs> in points. It's just like <laughs> this record for thirty-seven minutes is, uh, if even if you don't like death metal, it's just so much fun to listen to, and if you do, it's just so refreshing hearing new things the whole way through yeah like that that um cryos cryos appear track has this like brilliant just tech thrash like abandon where it, it's you know you mentioned all those things it's like voivod grappling with some kind of like melodic classic heavy metal band being played yeah. by you know death metal players and it's the longest track on the record at seven minutes it's also one of the most breakneck fast ones on the record mm. and it's such a fun move to go okay we're gonna go long form and we're gonna take you places but we're going to just fucking drag you along there and give you a thrill as it's happening. And like, I've always liked how horrendous, how horrendous do noodly, but it doesn't actually feel like kind of overly, you know, pretentious or kind of self-serious or anything. It's like, you can feel the excitement of people who are generally having fun playing. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy that. They're just like Joe, like I say, just thrashing riffs and the solos aren't kind of like, it's, it doesn't feel like, you know, all wanky. Look at me playing all the notes. There's, purpose and direction to the solos just kind of propelling things forward you get um i feel like there's like two minutes in with the clean vocal bit on um cries so pure or whatever like the weird kind of proggy melodies in the guitars but then you just get like a big riff that follows it's it's like that song i think is awesome for like seven minutes and how much ground it covers um like really think it's great yeah and then the second half of that first song has this like amazing almost like um sort of rush like build everything back up it's got these beautiful, you know, dynamics and volume and tempo, lead guitars, those clean vocals you mentioned, which they really mucked with this time. Like, there's that bit in um, uh, Preterition Hymn. There's this big climax. There's almost like kind of like chanted, like trance-like part. But the, the vocal that you're mentioning, Elliot, their vocal has always had this really like strangled, hoarse, like high-pitched death metal yell. And there are points on this where it's like the most twisted it's ever been while also pushing the most of the four it's ever been. And the midsection of Christ Appear, when you get that, when I reach out for you, when I stretch my arms, like, all on its own, that's the most horrendous of relied on, like, a big vocal moment. 
to my memory. And it happens again in um, uh, the Cult of Sh- uh, Shadoa, which the main riff of Cult of Shadoa literally sounds like a hardcore fucking bounce part, doesn't it? Like that, yeah. duh, 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 that duh, real duh. mean stomp like, on it. Yeah. Like. I was like, if you swap out the tone of that for a drain tone or something, like it's uncanny. All of a sudden, you just want to jump on someone's head. Is that it has, crossover kind of thrash yeah, hardcore? It, has thing. A, it basically has a mosh call at the end when it goes, "Keep on coming," and it's like it, it's like a full like slithery. Prog I think it's my favorite song on the record. Like, yeah, that sure, one. but like it's like it's like a prog death meets beat down fucking. It's, and it's just as satisfying as like any more basic band that you might have heard this year. But this has mm. so much more ideas going on and so much more that it's bouncing around along with. I think that's one of my favourite things about it is that you can look at it on just a sort of primitive level and it's so inherently satisfying. But it also has that kind of dizzy space-age wildness that keeps it refreshing on repeat. Listen, like Neon Leviathan kicks off like pure motorhead. It's mad. And the song. riff on that. The riff on that is like a mix between Venom and Cynic. And you're like, one of those bands <laughs> was like incredible musicianship. The other, they could not play their instruments. <laughs> they couldn't so much as tune them. And yet they found a middle ground between those two things that feels natural. And then pre- pre- Peritician, Peritician yeah. him? Whatever. The hymn like, song. It's like, <laughs> it's like Ghost Bath crossed with Voivod played slowly. It's such a weird combination. But then when those gang vocals come in at the end, this weird, clumsy, slightly aimless song just sounds monolithic. It's yeah. Just, I don't know how they do it. Neon Leviathan has just got such a gonzo physicality to it. Like, the way the bass line is, like, tapping around all over under that riff that you mentioned. It's And they have a really pleasing extreme metal tone where, like, the production is just spot on, as always with the horrendous. They have some of the best, like, tones in the business right now. Um, and it, it's... It's quite a high tone for death metal, where it really allows, like, again, that there's a real clarity to it. Um, it's, you know, it, it's like, it's a, a sound that almost, like, it exists in extreme metal, and almost what could be, like, 70s classic rock simultaneously. Like, for as harsh <laughs> as they can be, there's just a really clear, detectable melodicism through all of it. Um, all of their big riffs that hit you first thing, like, again, the title track, just fucking rocks as well. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, like, what a fucking rock star tune. The I mean, put in my notes, title track is rocking, loads of riffs. <laughs> like a song called "Ontological Mysterium," like that is just tranquilizing as a concept. But you just feel like smashing up that cantina in Star Wars, and you're like, and then he gets to that melodic middle se- melodic middle section, and suddenly it's like Panzerfaust era Dark Throne. If they had more than eight quid to spend on recording it, and then back to pummeling you again, it's just fucking. It's it's baffling. Again, they had that really quick evolution over their first handful of records where they became this very progressive death metal band. Um, and, I, and I found it very encouraging how they were a band who, like, I I liked them a great deal and I really liked what they do. Um, but this record has surprised me, not necessarily in terms of quality, because I've always thought they were fucking great, right? But it has sounds in it. And it has, it has basically, it's evidence that there's still more to come right like it's not just they've landed on a thing and that's them now it's like there's still new ideas to be you know thrown around and and, and glued together and you know like i said it's, it's their like most excitable record while I mean, also being got, their kind of widest the, the the spooky nonsense on x egg n assist like that, that <laughs> like, yeah like, the, like sometimes we go, and that, that song is like genuinely almost like scooby-doo spooky in some of the tones and stuff with the spoken word but like it's, it's, it's fun just having these kind of like little offshoots where they go into something different like that. The Scooby-Doo is a great comparison and it even extends to the vocals because he has these super characterful growls but in, in that song they go up at the end like they're asking questions. Yeah. So it's like... <laughs> that, that, that's like, what kind of got me the comparison there. It is, but it managed to do that without being goofy and silly. Yeah, he doesn't sound like a valley girl or anything. It's just like... It's just perfectly like mental... Like appropriately mental for the song they've written. Like I, this I don't know if this is a spoiler for the end of the year list or anything, but I've not been this addicted to a new extreme metal record since maybe the Ash Inspire record last year. Like when that came into my life, and it was I was listening to it two or three times a day <coughs> for weeks, like for completely different reasons. But putting this on, it's just it's a death metal record that's like it, it tickles the brain. Yeah, it's it's unbelievably dexterous, progressive, extreme metal music. But it sounds like the people playing it are just authentically right there together as a band, 
having an unbelievable amount of fun playing it. And, you know, it's it's tasteful and excitable in equal measure, which is a really intricate sort of balancing act. Like, you know, if Cynic really just cut loose and let the wind in their hair, like, it's a, it's a really fun time. And I recommend you all check it out. The band are called Horrendous.